All right, good morning, everybody. And welcome to today's Sunday School lesson. And we'll be continuing on faith. Uh, last few Sundays, we've been talking about faith, and we'll continue to talk about it today. Uh, faith of a centurion. Or really, the centurion servant was healed. And we're going to talk about the healing part of the aspect of the lesson today. Yes. Last week, uh, Minister uh, Bell did a great job, and we talked about faith and teaching and Jesus' teaching and healing. Today, we're going to be talking about a centurion soldier, a Roman soldier who had a servant that he turned to the Lord to get healed. <clears throat> so as we walk that one, just think today, a soldier who's trained to be disciplined, tough, fighting, humbles himself and turns that thing over and says, Lord, you're going to do it. And oh, by the way, as we heard last week, we're going to send him to your buddies and your friends, and y'all going to get him, and y'all going to heal my servant. Amen. Now, that right there in preparing for the lesson was very humbling because when you think about it, and we'll get more into it, first off, when you're talking soldiers, these are hard men, if you will, back in that time that were trained and selected to be commanders on the ground. Their main primary job was to fight and win, period. So now you're talking somebody who's disregarding all that to turn that thing over to a Jew who he believed in, but in his essence, I got to let go and, and realize that this guy, there's something about him. He's powerful. Even in the mix of all of my power, it's somebody that's more powerful than me. Regardless of how high I am, he, even if he might not be as high as me, I'm still believing that he's going to hear my servant. That right there, I'll tell you like right now, we ended last week talking about praising and thanking God. We can stop right there and start right there just thanking and praising God. Especially for those who know or in a position where you might be dealing with some kind of issue of, of some type of healing, or you know somebody that needs some healing, and you've been to the doctor, you've been going around, and you're trying to figure out, what am I going to do? What is he going to do? What is he going to do? And the only thing you can do is turn to the Lord himself and say, Lord, the only way this is going to happen is you do it. Nobody else, Lord, you. And guess what? Just like the centurion, we get humble to the point where we allow God to do it. Yes, sir. And as we acknowledge that, then God can now have the, the, the glory in it. God can have the peace in it. God can have the, his way in it. And I ain't even started. I'm already excited in the teaching because this is chapter seven. It started a little bit in chapter four, but chapter seven is when we really start seeing Jesus for who he is, for what God is going to do. And as we read further in chapter 7, God will start revealing himself throughout that chapter. Starting in chapter 7, walking all the way through the remainder of the book of Luke. We see the miracles. We see the boat. We see him feeding. On and on and on and on. But it starts with the faith of this interior. But it started last week. Of the faith of the other last one, of the other situation that we dealt with, we talked about. This is just a continuation. So as we get into the lesson, nothing new here. For those online, if you want to chime in, raise your hand, star nine, and we continue on. And let us know this is again as a participative class. Y'all know this. We we come in here week after week, the intent. Y'all know my teaching by now. Probably no more. I'm, I'm looking to go 40 minutes. 40 minutes, I'm looking to be done. So, Reverend Graham, I know she do a great job of that. Give me a hand signal back there if I'm past 40, and I need to shut my mouth and get Pastor up here to close it out. So, 40 minutes is what we're looking to do. Again, this is participative, so if you have something you want to say, raise your hand or just say it, and we acknowledge you. So, with that being said, this is where we're coming from. This is it. I'm going to start praying right now. And then we'll get into the actual lesson. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another chance and another opportunity to fellowship and to worship your name in spirit and in truth. 
God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've allowed us to see. Lord, there is work for us to be to done yet. We just thank you for the assembling of the saints. For this, as your word tells us, we should not take it for granted. We thank you for the teaching we're about to go forth. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We pray for those who had the desire to be here but could not. We pray for those who are sick and shut in. And we pray, Lord, for our class that you give us revelation, give us clarity, and that you give us understanding to walk in faith just like the centurion did. Again, Lord, we just thank you. We honor you. And before we even start, Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen. Now, as we said, we're going to be talking about the faith of the centurion. We're going to look at scriptures, uh, Luke 7, 1 through 10. And again, as I already said, to set this up, chapter 7, chapter 7 in particular, this is when we start seeing the one of the, the well, the second time, the first time we saw it in chapter 5, chapter 4, and then the chapter 5. Now we're going to see the healing of what Jesus is, is, is here to do, one of his primary purposes. And he had three in particular, teaching, preaching, and healing. Today, we're going to focus on the healing part. Good. But one of the things that we really need to understand with this healing is divine. A divine healing slash calling. We already know, we just prayed or we just studied about the resurrection we just studied about his life. We just had Easter. We just did all that. Now we're starting to see who Jesus is. We're starting to get a snapshot of that. Even before the disciples is all brought into the fold, they eventually get brought in. But what the, the, but the beauty of it is, do we really see? That's something that was just in my mind to prepare for this lesson. We talk about faith. We talk about uh the different aspects of it. His signs, Jesus shows us who he is through what he's done, but do we really see and know him for who he is? That's something for all of us to ponder. <clears throat> now, why I say that? Because there are going to be times where we're going to be tested for sure. How do we know? Because life's situations and life issues Will, will put us in that position. If you just turn on your TV, my wife and I was looking yesterday, what happened in, in Israel? What did they do? What did Iran do? They bombed them. Or they did drones and all that stuff. So, as we've already already said, what God's word said, wars and rumors of wars, didn't it? Didn't he tell us that? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's rumors of wars. Possible war, we don't know. But guess what now? Now we got to see it and let this thing play out. And oh, by the way, what happens if things escalate? We studying about centurion. Guess who got to prepare? Soldiers. Yeah. And guess what? That was going to be tested if they have to go. Their faith. So guess what? Don't they have faith? Uh-huh. So what is faith? What is faith? Let's do a quick summary of that. What is faith? What is it? Substance of things. Hope or evidence of things what? Not seen. Okay. That's faith. I just had to ask that. Because again, sometimes we have to make sure we understand what the word means. That's what we studied. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the, the purpose of Luke. I like to do that with, with my teachers. They'll do a little historical thing, why the, the book stands. We're going to go into it right quick. <laughs> Luke wrote this gospel to the Gentiles to provide a full and accurate record of all that Jesus began to do and teach. I just told y'all that was one of his things, which is teaching. This lesson focuses on the healing aspect of his ministry until the day in which he was taken up written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. See, as Dr. Grace has talked several times, and some of y'all too, we can't never forget that. <laughs> inspiration of the Holy Spirit. 
Nothing any of us can do in here is without that. I'll put a pin there. Holy Spirit within us, allow us to do. Walking by faith in God. To be able to carry out the purpose for which we're called and the purpose for which he's called. Common theme, walking in the Holy Spirit. Without that, can't do it. Can't do it. He intended inquirers and converts to know with certainty the exact truth about which they had been orally instructed. Now that is something we need to, to chew on today. The truth about which they have been orally instructed. Truth. We covered that in here a few times. I think I can't remember who's teacher talked about truth and people falling away from the truth. Don't scripture tell us that? They tell us, don't they? People hear truth or their versions of what they think truth is and falling away from it. But the beauty of studying together is what? We can make that right by studying what God's word says. That is the only truth is God's word. Anything else of that, all of us need to be questioning. Wait a minute, Lord, you can say that. That ain't your word. So for us, when we hear things and see things that's not lined up with scripture, not lined up with the Holy Spirit, we know it's not from him. That's that simple. We try to make it hard. It ain't hard. It's just that simple. This purpose is apparently apparent throughout the gospel, tracing Jesus' human genealogy back to Adam and not just to Abraham as Matthew did. Jesus is seen clearly as a divine human savior who came as God's provision of salvation for all Adam's sin. He came for us, all of us. Now let's talk about the history, a little bit of history about this. Luke was a Gentile, as he just said in the previous statement. The only non-Jewish author of a Bible book. Non-Jewish. Centurion. Non-Jewish. Common theme, man. Yeah. Jesus is what? Jewish. The Holy Spirit, there you go again, prompted him to write Theophilus, which we already studied in some previous lessons, whose name means one who loves God. I should have put that in right here. <laughs> One who loves God. <laughs> yep. Ain't we called the love? Yeah. Ain't we called the honor? Uh -huh. Ain't we called the blessed name? Yeah. That's what we do week after week in this church. Yeah. Bless your holy name. I guarantee probably whoever is the minister, uh, worship leader, is going to start our service off that way somehow. Bless your name, Lord. We honor and we praise you. In all things. Not some, all. In order to fill a need in the Gentile church for a full account of the beginnings of Christianity. That's where it all started. God's love for his son and God's love for us. And that's what we are called to do. Walk in God's love and take that, take it wherever we take it. And then when we are faced with life challenges, walk in faith in Jesus' name. That's what we call it. No if, ands, and buts about it. No chase, as some would say. You ain't got to debate that. You ain't got to argue that. That's pretty firm. That is a firm directive and a firm command. See, what we have to get back to... <clears throat> just like a soldier would, would do, if you will. We have to stand on the principles of God's word and we have to mean it and walk in some power. I think I've heard some of y'all, we even talk about it here. People have lost their power. Hmm. How they lost it? No faith, no stand, not in Jesus' name. Yep, it's going to be weak, tired, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Because in order to fight as a soldier would fight, you have to be ready, prepared, and then you have to be ready to throw blows when the time comes. Can't do it without this here. Can't do it. No way. 
No shape, no how. But we try to do it. We're not ready, we're not prepared, and we try to fight. Like I told my wife, when those things hit out Israel yesterday, I could call my friends right now, right down in Carolina, in New York. They on the ready right now. Right now. 82nd Airborne Division on the ready right now. 10th Mountain Division on the ready right now. Why? What am I saying? They are preparing. So should they get called, what's going to happen? Say, when God calls us, what happens? Are you ready? Stand on some faith. That helps you prepare. But without faith, are you really ready to fight? No, we're not. So as we study this, fellowship, pray, Bible study, Sunday school, I don't care. All that does, the different avenues and venues, is prepare us for what we have to do. Again, in Jesus' name. And we have to stand. Just like he stood. Servant said, go to God, go to Jesus. Matter of fact, I ain't worthy of him. I ain't worthy to do it. You take him over there. I can't do it. Matter of fact, he, I, I ain't even worthy to have you in my house. I'm not worthy of it. And guess who else ain't worthy? We ain't. But by his grace, that's changed. We are by his grace. Not nothing we've done, just like with, with him. Nothing he's done, but by God's grace, he's worthy of So we beat up on ourselves. It's God's grace that's sufficient and that's going to endure and go take us to where we got to go. Those I said, God's grace. Same for them same folks I told you that's preparing down the road. God's grace is going to take them in if they got to go, and God's grace is going to bring them home. That's the only way. Not Biden, not Trump. God's grace is going to do it. And the only way for us to deal with any of this stuff, God's grace is going to have to do it. It's going to, we're going to have to stand on that today. Fight for our children. Fight for the culture. Fight for the church. Fight for the office. Fight for this. Fight for that. Only through God's grace is we're going to be able to sustain and maintain. But first, we have to have faith in who he is. Who he is, what he's done, everything he's done for us prior. We have to stand on it. <clears throat> Without that, there's nothing. Everything we did last month, last few weeks, is for not if we can't stand now. All he sacrificed for us, we have to be able to, to show that now. And I've said to y'all, it's been in my spirit, and I'm going to keep saying it until you tell me to stop. When we're walking in God's light and God's love, that faith is going to manifest and it's going to show. No matter what anybody tries to say or do to you, that faith through love is going to show. Can't do it without it. Now let's get into the actual scriptures to validate some of the stuff I've been saying. Starting at verse 1. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, I told y'all last week, he started to teach. They listening. He entered Capernaum, Capernaum. There a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to what? Ain't no coming back, about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus. He heard. He had not seen. He heard of it and sent some elders. Huh, we got some elders in here, don't we? Yeah. Elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and to heal this servant. <laughs> he sent them. Right? I ain't doing it. Go get the Jew. I heard of this guy. My servant is about to die. He worked for me. He's mine. He worked for me. He's about to die. Let's get him up here to heal him. I know. I heard he can do it. I just want I, I need him to do it. Hook a crook. I need to get him in here to heal my servant. He's dying. He 
He heard about it and sent his elders, as I said, asked him to come and to heal the servant. Verse 4, when he came to see Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. Hmm. This man deserves to have you do this. Verse 5, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went. He had to go. He went. Verse 6, he was not brought from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself. For I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. I don't deserve this. But listen to what he said later down there. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come, to come to you, to come to you. But you say the word, and my servant will be healed. I'm not worthy, but you say the word, and he healed. Yeah. See, we need to be walking in some hands. Jesus, I'm going to you. You do it. I'm believing it. That's it. Yeah. And so, and then I'm gonna go tell everybody else, and I'm gonna bless your name, and I don't care who here. Verse 8. For I myself, this one got me. I said, Lord, okay. You 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 speak it. I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. This guy was equivalent to what they call a gay combat team commander, 06 level commander. Five, three to five thousand soldiers under his under his charge. Typically, for folks like that, everybody don't become that. It's automatically selected to be that, and there's only a handful in major organizations. In the, in the typical regular army, 25,000, which makes the division, you have six. Oh, sixes. Okay, come out. They're the ones, sort of like the kings of the outfit. They make all the decisions, and they're right there on the ground. And like I said, the selection rate is very tough. Everybody overcome that. Okay? And he says, I tell this one go, and he goes. Yeah. And that one come, and he comes. I just told y'all. I work with some folks like that. When you around folks like that, in today's world, they call them, a lot of the commanders are airborne, rangers, special ops, folks like that. When they speak, I'm just telling y'all, church, what I live. When they speak, there's no question. Zero. Anybody that speaks out of turn is easily seen and dealt with. <laughs> this ain't even wrong. This is America's army now. Anybody that speaks out of turn is seen, automatically seen, because you see, okay, who said that? That one. And dealt with it. You don't make it in the ranks, in other words. It's an honor just to serve with them. Are y'all walking with me? Yes. It's an honor just to serve with them. So when he say that, he is humbling himself to Jesus, and he is a man in authority now. Y'all walking with me? Yes. So as a centurion leader, everybody that I command do what I say when I tell them. But I ain't worthy to even be in this guy's presence, more or less having me in my service. Mm. Yes, sir. Why is that a problem? It seems like the military is well structured with what it was described. Why did it can't happen in the church? <laughs> we are the authority too. <laughs> yeah. You got you want to answer that one? Well, I, 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 I want to also follow that up and concur with his question because my experience being in the military, being overseas and in the chaplain, chaplaincy in churches and the services they have there, we have guys who are in charge of people, sergeants, staff sergeants, uh, uh, colonels. They, they command people and they run that, that organization and all of that and these locals and these vehicles. And then when they go to the, those, those Protestant services, they act just like we see people act out. They're out of control. And my, I had that same question. Why is it that we can do this with the military and follow that structure? Then we get in church and we act unseemly. Mm. Well, what I Yeah. Well, Dr. Grace. I, I, I think it's because in church you have free will. You got free will. 
But in the office, you don't know. I'll, 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 I'll try to answer this one. But, go ahead. And one, I think it's also the disciplinary action that could be taken on a soldier. We do not subscribe to that in the church. Should we? We should. Okay, that's we should. But we don't because, like she said, we got free will. You can't tell me what to do. Uh, no, ain't no, you're not, you're not a, a master over me. But we don't submit ourselves to the authority that we're under in the church. We do it in the natural, but we don't do it in the spirit. Then it makes us out there, out, out there by ourselves under nobody's Correct. <laughs> and I don't think that that's pleasing to God. I don't mean. Well, when, I, when I say to it, from seeing it from both sides, from seeing it in the church, my wife and I have been fellowshipping in the church all over the world, seeing it there and seeing it militarily too. Um, one of the differences I see is the honor part. Um, you do have the discipline, but you also have the honor. Uh, normally, by the time you reach a certain level, there's a level of respect, just like a parent, if you would. And you, you don't want to do anything to, to dishonor who you're with and where you're with because you're part of them. Uh, in the church, often as we've seen it, you don't see that quite same level of honor and respect. You hear it, but you don't always see it. And uh, but I'll just say from, from my own experience, um, being around men and women in, in that side, they're like family, if you will. Uh, one of the things that I always can, can, can look back on it and even remember, even to this day, is they always had your best interest at heart. But also, <clears throat> the main thing they wanted to instill in you was who you were, who you was a part of, and that you really understood that, and they got that in your heart. Yeah. Everything else was just a joy to do and, and to serve. And getting back to that part, that's something that you learn really, really quickly, is that when you understand the servanthood part, Everything else is subservient to that. And then it's, a, it's really big as far as structure. Once you get the structure and understand the structure, then the respect and the honor and all that stuff sort of like works itself. And then if you can't adjust to that culture, they don't have an issue telling you you're not part of this and you have an issue and we're going to make it so you're not going to be here. So again, in the church, you don't, I'm going to get you, in the church, you don't see that as much, but there they don't, they don't have time to tolerate folks that's not adjusting to the way things are. Well, I'll say the thing that I would also mention, uh, Pastor, is that it's not so much the free will, it's the disregarding of the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. In the military, if you disregard the hierarchy, then you're out. Right. But in the church, we as Christians forget that. Christ is the head of the church. Nice. But everybody that he's called over us mm -hmm. answers to him. Yes. Even down to the to the mosquito wing to the break pipe. We answer to Christ. Right. So the hierarchy is Christ and then the people he's called, the pastors, the, mm -hmm. the bishops. But we seem to forget that that bishop is speaking for Christ. Right. So we do, we can speak to you anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we would think, if I speak to Pastor Daddy's anyway, I'm speaking to Christ anyway, that would change our thinking because of the hierarchy. Right. Mm -hmm. Say that again. So that is where the breakdown is, that's the breakdown that you may encounter. Right. You're not speaking with yourself, you are represented. Right. Just like when the, when the, uh, when the, when the, uh, life comes, you talk to the girl. So if you disrespect him, you disrespect the consequences. And in the church, if we think consequences happen immediately. We don't realize, just like with Adam and Eve, if you eat this, you'll surely die. Oh, we ate it, we did that, he did. So we in the church are too willing to disregard the horror. Pastors, ministers, they are, you should see Christ. Just like we should see Christ when we speak to each other. That would change how we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we're too ready to disregard the heart. And, and let me also say very quickly that because of that military structure, most likely they win a lot of battles. 
physical battles. I think the reason why we cannot win spiritual battles is because we don't have that structure, we don't have the respect that Sister Lot is talking about. And then how can we? But the devil is destructive. The devil is structured. And so if we are in a spiritual warfare, we should be structured as well. But we're not structured. We don't have that honor. We don't represent that that uh, uh, you know that hierarchy. And so therefore we're losing a lot of spiritual battles. And a church can't move forward because of that what? Of that that undisciplined and and, and, and not having that structure. I'm gonna echo one point and then we'll get you, ma'am. And Pastor, you're right. Even just reflecting back and even look, thinking now. <clears throat> militarily, you're always thinking to win, you're always thinking war, and if nothing else, you're studying your opponent, that's all, you, you probably do more of that than anything, and then when you have to go actually go fight, you're already ready, because right. you've been studying, you've been training, you do it so much, so much, so much, till you ain't got to think anymore. See, when you get to the point where you ain't got to think, and, and also, too, and I'll get you that one, is that as my leader, I'm honored to be in your presence. Mm -hmm. Because if depending on where I'm at in that hierarchy, you eventually are not going to be there. So I have to be ready. Right. And that's something else that's taught is if you go down, I go down, you step in, you step in, we continue on. Right. See, in the church, I don't see that sometimes. If the pastor's gone, then I, who, who's stepping in next? So if you understand that, that structure like that, then you can connect. Walking side by side, speak the same voice. You ain't got all this discontention, and you and you and now you can, you can serve the greater good. Right. But like I said, I go back to my point. I'm just happy to be your presence because I know you're gonna bless me. And if, like I said, eventually, if I desire, eventually, Lord, I'm gonna be the one that. Oh, I know she'll tell you. For me, that was motivated. For me, you ain't gonna always be here, man. I know you're old. Eventually, you're going to get out of the way. Okay, Lord, you're going to put me there. But what we have to be careful there is when he does put us there, are we ready for what we're asking, even with from the, even in the ministry? Are you really ready and asking to be a pastor? Huh? You sit next to him. Are you really ready? So you have to be ready if you ask him that. What are you going to do when he give it to you and bless you? They're like the centurion when he healed him. What are you going to do after he healed him? Yes. What are you going to do? You're going to pray? You're going to not? What are you going to do? I'm going to get you, ma'am, and then I'll get you. Uh, eat. You, you answered my question. I wanted to, you to expound about the training of the commanders and, and what they go through and how they connect with those that they lead mm -hmm. to the point where those followers have confidence and trust in their leaders. Um, I, I think that's that's key. Well, because some of the, the best men and women I've ever seen, there's two aspects of that. They have the, 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 the humility to know who they are, mm -hmm. and then they have the wisdom and the experience to teach you right. that you need to replace me. Mm -hmm. And their ultimate goal is to teach you to replace me. Yeah. And, I, and you do that by following me. I'm going to show you the path. And when it's time for me, now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to humble myself to make sure I put you in position so that you can do that. Right. And if I'm, I'm, I'm belittling you, I'm negating you, then I'm not really teaching or training you. Amen. But it's twofold. You have to be willing to sit at my feet to hear what I'm talking about. So and a lot of times, I can, I can speak on this with myself. I'm in with general officers. The first word I get is don't say not one word. Okay. Your job is to sit here and listen and take a note. Okay, Lord, in Jesus' name, I got that. Then they look at you the same. Okay, well, I was instructed not to talk, but we want you to talk now. So, again, that's one of those ones where that's part of the training, too. And the training aspect, even in the church, has to be continuous. It can't be a little bit here, a little bit there. It has to be continuous. And as we walk this thing, see, the greatest lesson any leader can teach you is to teach you that the walk that they walk. Yeah. So if he's a pastor, if your next hit is to be that, you have to watch his walk. That's an example you can you can learn from. Okay, do this, don't do this. Ultimately, let the Lord lead you. 
in that way, you're getting your teaching. So when God called you, okay, you sat up under him, had your shot, boom. And that's how it works. Even there, she'll tell you, many years, I was mad, complaining, complaining. Oh, I'm not, I ain't making nine. I'm ready, Lord, I'm ready, ready. Nope, you're not. You're going to sit up under this one? You're going to sit up under this one? This one, this one. I sit up like 15 of them. And God finally promoted me. And I said, like, okay, Lord, here we go. Here we go. But guess what now? Once he did it, I said, I'll go back to that. Once he did it, now he got to start showing me, okay, Lord, the whole thing changed. Group, the whole thing changed. I'm sitting at people's feet, she can tell you. I'm sitting at Joker's feet. We traveling all over the globe. I got a computer. Me and everybody and his brother, but I wasn't a guy at the time. It wasn't my time. Wasn't my time. I thought it was, was not. And when it was, God moved all of them off the way. Your time now. What are you going to do? You're going to leave your wife, your son's going to college, all three of y'all going in three different directions, and I'm sending you to Iraq. Four months after I put on, you're gone. In Jesus' name. Y'all see where I'm going? Yeah. Again, even with this, the lesson of this whole thing is the centurion was a man in and of authority, humbled himself, and let God heal this servant. That's what we have. When we're in these positions, when we're in these positions, we have to know that it ain't us, ultimately. That God is the one that's going to do it. And we have to give him the glory and the credit and let him. Then when we do, then he's going to take us places we can only dream of. Mm -hmm. um, a situation with our folks uh, that I've learned, we want to live to do what we want to do. My Lord. It's bad. It's bad. That's in our mind. Mm -hmm. Spirit, respect is given. Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, uh, Came hey, from headquarters and here to then just to run it. The first thing the employees asked me was 9 a.m. What's going on? I heard you come up to the bar and I heard you was a big blah blah blah. And so what you gonna do to earn our uh, respect? That's absolutely enough. They said, What you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna give you respect. You do a good job, I won't. Come in. You do a great job. I'm going to reward you. You're doing a bad job. You're going to get out of my house. That's the respect I'm going to give you. Now, would you give me? I don't care. My job is to respect you. And when I went into that office, they were no more, not in, in the state of Virginia. A month later, they were no more. Why? Well, because I'm a great leader, they have not seen me in their life. It was because I taught them how to respect themselves. When you have respect, you can respect others. Yeah. I don't care who the leader is, whether it's track, football, whatever. Um, the coach don't care whether you go respect it. If you don't do what he's supposed to do, he's going to run around the track for you. Yeah. The problem is we have to learn to give respect to people yeah. and stop waiting for them to earn. In other words, if he visits the city the way I want, he's a good back. If he uh, gives that I want, he's a good back. If he comes to my home, he's a good back. But we are to give respect not only to pastors, but all who. I tell you what, give respect to your next door. There you go. That's all I have to say. Yes, sir. Soldiers. <laughs> and he said, when I say go, they go. That means they give him what? Respect. It's amazing he say that because uh, one of the, probably the best advice I ever got from a leadership perspective was how many parents in here? How many parents? Best advice I ever got, I share with y'all. You ain't a friend, you a leader. That's tough. Yeah. And just like just like he was saying, I think going back to the parenting thing, I know all I don't know about y'all, but I know I do sometimes. We just get sick and tired and sick and tired. Yeah. And groaning. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I do. And you've already spoken once, maybe twice. 
and you still ain't getting the result you're looking for? Uh -huh. So again, even the beauty with the lesson is that even as verse 9 tells us, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Um, I don't. We read what he did in the previous verses. Yeah, the Jews to do it. I ain't worried. And then he gave you his credentials. He told you who he was. And then Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He was amazed. I know we got some Bible scholars in here. And I said, oh, you got to help me with this. I ain't seen that nowhere else in Scripture. Not that. No. But Jesus was amazed. I ain't seen it. Maybe y'all have. I ain't. Jesus was amazed. But centurion gave some qualities that lead us that we've been talking about, listen, and follow and do. Yeah. He humbled himself, first off. He understood who was the ultimate source, source of getting to verse 10. Then the men who had sent had been sent returned to the house. Right? He asked them to go first. But he didn't ask Gentile. He asked the Jew. Then when they came back, they returned and found the servant well. The book, one or two verses said, oh, he saved on what? What did he say in the very first beginning of this thing? He said, what verse do you say? He was thinking about the what? Yeah, yeah. And what did verse 10 just say? Yeah. All right. And what and what happened in between that? What did he do? Oh, he opened himself, right? And then what did he do? He asked somebody else to speak on him, but he didn't even do it. I ain't going. Uh -uh. I'm sitting to you. Nah. Uh -uh. Lord, I ain't going over there. Y'all, y'all go over there. But I know when y'all go over there, he gonna heal him, and my servant is gonna come back and serve me and gonna be well with him. So what am I saying as we get ready to close this out? This lesson. We're about done. Now, as we look on further in chapter seven, which we won't do, I'll just be a little snapshot. Go read for yourself after this. <laughs> Jesus. Now it's showing everybody who he is. See, the Lord speaks through us now. He shows us who he is. Do we take the time to walk, to watch and follow and see who he is? We always ask him about what the leaders, what does leaders need to do? How can they lead us do this? How can leaders do that? Perfect example, this story right here. You want to learn about leadership? Read the story. But better yet, Read the story and then start doing the story and applying. Amen. Now, these two points here sum up the lesson. Great faith. Historian <laughs> showed great faith. Right? Yes. Anything that Jesus did among the Jews, basically telling us that. And the last part he did was divine healing. For sickness and disease, which is what we what we're seeing here. So you had great faith shown by the centurion, and Jesus did it by healing. There's a third part on there, I ain't said that I need to say for all of us to get. And the last part of that is the ones that receive the blessing need to go tell somebody else. Amen. And that's what we're charging. Yeah. You get up off your sick bed, you get up off your dying bed. God do it, bring you back. Yes. We had a, a, a tough winter, all this COVID stuff, all that. It's nice out here. It's beautiful out. We're in our right minds. That's another praise God right here. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, get rid of this COVID stuff and shake it out and so we got to do it no more. Yeah. In other words, we ain't going to give it all to you first. Yeah. We're going to give it all. Yeah. Now, some of us were down and out and God has brought us back. Yeah. If it wasn't us physically, we know somebody. All of us in here. Ain't none of us exempt. If you go back and reflect on it, some folks in the high school trying to pick this up from 2019 and still ain't got no answers. <laughs> ain't got no answers. But God's word tells us what? Trust in him. Yes. Acknowledge him. Yes. Give it all to him. And then guess what he gonna do? Yes. He gonna manifest and he gonna show us. And the same book, what we're studying, all of those tell us 
to let our light so shine so that men can what? See. How your life gonna shine when you ain't walking in no faith? <laughs> How your life gonna shine you ain't walking in no love? That's crazy. They're too low, low. I'm walking in light in love and I'm mad at my wife. I can't even look at her. Wrong. I'm lying to myself and her for y'all. Lying. <laughs> and my exterior, even if I try to hide it, resonate inside out. That's why this stuff right here, this stuff right here, as I close, as, I, as I'm done, this stuff, I don't know how many of y'all got to go to the doctor. I know mine always ask me, how much water are you drinking? How clean are you? She always owes me a bottle. You ain't drinking enough water. Okay. But as we cleanse ourselves with the Spirit of God, to walk in love, that faith is going to be, be energized together in unison. Then we can go do what God calls us to do, soldiers in God's army. Let me make that very clear so y'all understand exactly what I said without hesitation. Soldiers in God's army, all of us here are called. After we have accepted him as Lord, we are called to stand. I mean, called to be all wimpy, called to stand. Anything and anybody you touch, children, grandchildren, I don't care. If you are called, in Jesus' name. Amen. And like the centurion being. And with that being said, I'm going right here. I'm going right here. The faith of the centurion. The servant was healed. God did. We don't know what we're going through separately. We know we all going through something. We all dealing with something. I will say this. As I bring the assistant superintendent up here, give us a close out and then chat uh, pastor. We better be walking in some faith. That's all I got. Yeah. We better be walking in some faith because we walk outside this field. We got gun violence. We got this. We got that. We got that. We got an election in about six months. We don't know who's going to get it. Dude on trial. He might get it and be the president again on trial. We don't know. We better be walking in some faith right now and better be able to speak it and stand when the time comes. Because if you can't, that devil is big. Amen. He will shake you if you ain't killed. Amen. That's why it tells us, meditate in God's word day and night. Yes. No break. Day and night. I got this little running joke, and I'm going to say it. Let you I mess with the teacher. I will go over there and ask them. I say, y'all had spring break? Y'all out? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had spring break. You know? If some of us had y'all, well, y'all would have no break. <laughs> it's the same with this. Get no break. Why? Because in order to continue on strong in that faith, you got to deal with this stuff and you got to beat it. That's what I mean by that. So, with that being said, I'm done. Thank y'all. <laughs> I tell young folks all the time, all young people, black and white, I'm learning to talk to all, we all are going to be fickle and friends. We all have problems. I tell them all, especially young folks, old folks can learn from you, but especially young folks. Whenever you respect, you draw them to you. Whatever you disrespect, you you grab for from it. And see, a lot of older people know the right way, but the reason they don't help some of our young people is because they are so disrespectful. They are, they are so disrespectful, and we should overcome that. But it's just hard to just overlook a disrespectful young kid. My grandmother used to tell us, she said, you pitiful, you don't even know. <laughs> but uh, today's uh, report, Sunday on the report, uh, we have uh, one, uh, seven, six teachers, we have 17 students, and we have seven online, which is a total of 27 in attendance. We have $37 for our offering this morning, and the next week lesson will be faith of an anointing. Yeah.
We have that authority if we just use it. Yeah. Yeah. See, the devil didn't, when it comes to men, the devil didn't prophesy to us. Y'all don't think we're prophesying to people. Make pumps out of us to the point that we don't want to use the authority that the Lord has given us. I'm going to tell you something else. There was a lot of violence down there, school down there. Kids fighting every day, uh -huh. just fighting each other. Just, they couldn't, could, they, they, they remember the superintendent, the superintendent couldn't do anything. The ponies there all the time. Guess what they did? Their fathers got together. Mm -hmm. One father called another father and said, Look, we can't have this going on without you. And they said, How are they going to learn? And when another father stepped in, from that day, violence seeped as they fought. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And there was no more violence because what? Fathers got involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Authority stepped in. Yes. And guess what? Mm -hmm. You've got to assert your authority. Yeah. Now, people say, well, what about you, Pastor? Well, you got to teach people about authority first. Exactly. But when I came here, it wasn't too much respect for authority. Right. So even if you like me or don't like me, at least respect the position. And I mean, yeah. amen. Now, if, if Trump becomes president, I still may not like him. I still got to respect what? The office of the president. Yeah. That was what was going on. See? So, oh, as I close, I, I told y'all this before. My daddy said, uh, uh, he was pastoring, so Robert was leaders. And uh, I think that he just wanted to go one way, mm -hmm. and daddy wanted to go another. Mm -hmm. So they all got together. You, 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 you act like, oh, I'm going to speak to you. He speaks to us too. And daddy said, I'm going to tell you what he tells me. Sorry, not me. I'm going to tell <laughs> Follow your leader. See, now this is not about tripping over position and tripping over it. It's just what? If you go and receive God's blessing, if you go back and read, don't tell me where, go back and read Psalms 133, where it talks about unity and how what, it comes down even on the what? The, the oil, it comes down to the head and the ears and everything. Yeah. And because of that unity, yeah. and because of that respect, the Bible said, God, what? God demanded the blessing. Yes. He demanded the blessing. So if we want to be blessed today, Father, 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 why do you think that God selected Joshua after Moses? Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the Bible do I ever read what Joshua ever said that for Man, you ain't got to, you, you done let your temple get to you. You ain't worth it. Never. But when it was time for Moses to go off the sea, mm -hmm. who was authorized? Mm -hmm. It was Joshua. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say to them that I had a sister that does this gathering here before. And Dr. Lee Butler, you know who they need to talk about. And he called him. Everybody is not meant to be a pastor. That's right. Everybody is not meant to be a pastor. In fact, 95% of you never will become a pastor. But what you have to do is learn how to serve and how to follow your leader. And then guess what? Who knows what God did? See? So, 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 I don't want to be no pastor. I'm going to tell you that. Be still don't want to be one. Because the job is hard because you're trying to unlearn people from what they learned over the years. I'm that talking about the plantation mentality. Mm -hmm. What you learn on the plantation, you didn't brought in the church. <laughs> and then you stick God's name in there, and God no honor that. Y'all don't think about that. People get upset. There's almost mutiny in the church because they had Christ pastor in the congregation. We had some folk wanted to change that. They wanted to put Christ's congregation in the past. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, just, you know, it's okay. We're, 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 we are we are we are Adams. When they when, when the law was broken, who did he call? Adam. 
If something goes wrong here at First Baptist Church, do you think the Lord will be searching out Deacon Hunter and all of the deacons? And who do you think? Who's name do you think you're going to call? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. You are responsible for this. You are responsible for this. And I'm going to hold you responsible you? because I put you in authority. Yes, sir. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Am I running right hey, hey, hey. So that's why you can add past all you want. If the pastor does not allow something to come in, <laughs> but I know what people do. Well, we got to take the vote. Well, you can take the vote. <laughs> so you done got confused with it. With, with democracy versus theocracy. The church has never been a democracy. The church has always been a theocracy. Well, Pastor, what's the difference? Theocracy is what? Christ gives the orders. And when he gives the orders just like he gives in the military, what? Then that what? That's Whoever right. is under that authority, he got to do what? He got to pass it on that. Yeah. What have I said? When Christ gives the orders to the pastor, then the pastor gives it to the people. Yeah. But you don't go and vote whether or not you want to follow the order. Go ahead. No. <laughs> oh, when you do that, that's like David, Kohat, when they came up here smoking, get for that. Most of them be done. And then God, when I tell you what, tell everybody this around Kohat, and they can all tell them I'm coming. <laughs> and the next day when he came, Moses said, I might die on the house of death, God didn't call me. But God do something new with Israel. You know he said me. And by the time before you think, what, what happened? God opened up the ground. He fell back and closed it back. And other folks around him said, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. But if we just can have that faith like this too, it would be great of people. He understood authority. He also understood that Christ not only has authority in heaven, he has authority on earth yeah. and over all yeah. sickness. Yeah. That's where your faith comes yes. yeah. in. He got, he got authority over all enemies, over all demons. Yes. You can't fight demons by yourself. That's why I say, look, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall out. And then Paul said, Do you know we're going to also judge angels? Can you believe that? We're going to be judged of angels. And those demons that have been in your children in the church, I'm going to have to go give me a stick. So I'm going to do some big bad things. <laughs> <laughs> but you got power and authority over them. I give you power and authority over the enemy. Yeah. You can trade over serpents. Yes, sir. And I see Mr. Graham just tagging on the wheel. Thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this lesson. Lord, we just thank you for being yes. here. Yes, yeah, Lord. And even though, Lord, they did not recognize your authority, even though, Lord, they did what they did to you, even though, Lord, they did what they do today, Father, we still know we are under authority. Yes. And we are under some great authority, some good authority, yes. some liberate authority. So we thank you for being uh, under authority. Father, we ask that you continue to bless all of our teachers, bless our superintendent, bless us all, Father, because you're so good to us. Help us to have that faith as the centurion. And the Bible says you've given us all a measure of faith. You hope that that faith, Lord, can, can grow just like we will with the centurion. And we can say, Lord, just speak the word. And believe in our hearts, it will be done. Now that we're closing out our Sunday school and entering into worship, we pray that you pour out the spirit fresh among us, and we'll be encouraged to go and advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.